Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm back today with a little art haul. Um, I'm very excited by the first part of this. I'm actually really excited by the second part as well. It will contain some items that you wouldn't necessarily expect me to buy, but all will be explained as we go through it. By the way, I just want to say, if you can hear some strange noises, some kind of banging, metallic kind of noises behind me, it's just the studio wood burner. I have it on because it's a cold day and I don't know why, but it seems to like to bang and clank away in the background. <laughs> I think it's expanding and contracting or something. Um, and also it's really getting stormy out there. So you might hear some of that as well. I want to start this art haul with this. Now this was a little package I received a few days ago from Tiny Clouds. Um, they are a watercolour maker, so these are handmade watercolours. It says on here, established 2019, so they've been going for a couple of years or so. Um, I'm sure that so many of you have heard of Tiny Clouds. I have actually been recommended them, they've been recommended to me <laughs> several times um, from my subscribers. And so I got curious back in November, they had a shop update um, I think I ordered these on the 1st of November, so whether the shop update was at the end of October, I don't know, but I ordered these on the 1st of November. I knew they were going to take a couple of months to come because I think she was making things to order, so it was like a pre-order kind of situation, but I thought it will be worth the wait and it will be a nice treat for when they arrive in January. So they arrived a few days ago and I have already, as you can see, opened the package because I just wanted to check that everything was there and that it was all okay. And then I got a little bit curious and did actually unwrap some of the paints, but <laughs> I haven't unwrapped these little extra packages and I'm gonna show you the paints and we're also going to swatch them in this video. So let's get on and have a look without further ado so that we don't sit here forever chatting away. So look at that, isn't that adorable? <laughs> I love this kind of powder blue um, tin. I don't actually have one this colour, a watercolour tin like this, so that's really nice. So as you can see they were very beautifully packaged. I like the fact that there's no plastic in this packaging as well. It just came in a cardboard box with um, some of this shredded cardboard inside. So we have this pretty little paint tin and inside you can see that I have in fact opened a lot of the paints. They all came looking like, if I can get these out, <laughs> looking like this. So they were wrapped in this pink foil. Um, she's put some little extras in here. I'm gonna show you what I didn't order. So we'll take those out because I didn't order those. So this is really nice of her. Um, okay, take that one out. And I didn't order this color either. So they're extras. The colors I ordered were now, when I went to her shop, she has like this color chart of lots of swatches and you can choose to make up your own collection of paints. So that's what I did. I think I went for eight colors and then I bought another one separately. I think it was Earthshine I bought separately. They have the names on them, so I'm gonna tell you what the names are. Polaris, Eighth House, Capricorn, Earthshine, that one's Earthshine, I think that was the extra one I got. Sagittarius, what's this one? Aries. Um, what have we got here? Blood Moon, They're great names, aren't they? And I can't get them out. I need to put them in there properly. I just lay them back in, but now I can't get them out. Sure. <laughs> and this one was Moon Child. So there are nine colours, and I believe the tin was free. So I ordered eight colors, got the free tin, and then I ordered an extra color because I thought the earth shine was really interesting. Um, so they're beautiful. We're going to swatch those. But she also gave me this buttermilk, this very pale yellow. So that will be interesting to look at. So you can see that that is the normal size of a half pan. These are like, I don't know what you call them, quarter pans. <laughs> they're really tiny. Um, I don't know what this says on the back here. Does it say Seven Sisters? Is that Seven Sisters? I think it might be. Um, so really bright pink. 
And let's unwrap the other ones and just see what they are. This is a total surprise to me. Um, but I got so curious, I wanted to open just to check and see what they were, what they looked like. And um, I thought I'd leave a couple to open on camera. This one's called Enigma. Gosh, that's really pretty. I love that sort of a, more of a vintage pink, very muted, maybe slightly lilac. I don't know how to describe that really. Very, very pretty. I don't know why, but I seem to be having problems with words today. So just forgive me. <laughs> and this one is, ah, oh, it's Pisces. So it's a very pretty muted blue. Reminds me a bit of the Holbein Acrylla Ash Blue, which is actually one of my favorite colors. So those are the little extras. Um, she also included like a swatch of, I guess this is the Virgo paint and it just says, Dear Natasha, thank you for your support and patience. I hope your paints will reach you soon. I added some extras for you to discover. Have a lovely 2022. So these little extras here, let's have a look and see what these are. So I'm very curious. So as I say, we're going to swatch these in the second half of this video. We have some little samples here. Gosh, that's a gorgeous green. Loving that. And a sort of, I don't know, if this was a luminance pencil, I would say this is like the French grey colour. So it's sort of a brownish grey. And then this beautiful muted violet grey colour. So it'd be interesting to swatch all of these little extras too. So what's in here? I don't know what this is. just a little oh look at that it's just a beautiful little tag with um, a little wax seal that has her logo on it tiny clouds paint that's really beautiful so as I say we'll be looking at all of these a little bit later on I'm just going to pop those in there and I'm going to grab the other bits and pieces that I have ordered with my affiliate credit recently. So I have Jackson's affiliate credit and I ordered a few bits from Jackson's and I've also got something that's from an Etsy seller as well. So I'm going to go and get those and we'll have a look at them. Okay, so if I sound a little bit different in this section it's because I'm standing and I'm a little bit closer to the camera. So this box, as you can see, contains quite a few interesting items that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be included in a Natasha Newton art haul. There's not a watercolour in sight in this section. So what we've got is some of the things that I'm going to need in order to get back into making things from clay. Now, some of you will know, some of you possibly not, <laughs> that years ago I took pottery evening classes. I have mentioned it, I took them for two years. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a long, long time ago. So I'm really out of practice because it was when I was a teenager and that was a long time ago, believe it or not. Um, we won't go into how long ago it was, but just trust me, it was quite a while. So I haven't done it for years, but I remember absolutely loving making things from clay. I found it really relaxing. I remember coming home because we would bring home, I actually did these evening classes with my mum and we would bring home our partially finished <laughs> objects, <laughs> um, our projects, should I say, <laughs> rather than objects, that sounds weird, our projects. We'd come home, they'd be covered in wet cloth, we'd get back in the evening, we'd put them in the utility room, and literally the moment I woke up the next morning, I would run to the utility room, grab my project, and I would sit there, even before I'd had any breakfast, um, sculpting my clay again. <laughs> so I really have wanted to get back to this for so long, but obviously Obviously, I don't have access to a kiln or all the fancy things you need. So what I've decided to do, firstly, is I'm going to be using air dry clay. So that's, let's just take these lethal looking objects 
away. <laughs> I'll show you those in a moment. It looks like I'm going to do an operation or something. Um, so yeah, I decided to go with the Das um, modelling play. This is the white version. They do like a terracotta as well, um, which I quite liked. But as I think I'm going to be painting my um, creations, <laughs> I'm never sure what to call them. I'm going to be using the white. So I basically have, I think this is, is this a kilogram or two kilograms? I'm not sure, I can't see. Um, anyway, it's heavy, trust me on this. So I've got two of these, because I thought if I get really into making things, I'm not going to want to stop and have to order some more. Um, so that's why I have two, but boy, are they heavy. Um, I've heard good things about this DAS modeling clay, so I'm hoping that it will be good for what I need. I've been watching lots of stuff on YouTube, by the way, um, I'm just going to put these over here. You can't see where I'm indicating, but I'm just going to pop them over here. Um, what was I going to say? I've been watching lots of videos on YouTube, instructional videos about working with air dry clay. So I'm really excited to get started. The second item in here is a large sponge. <laughs> now this is one of those classic moments when you order something online, you think it's going to be a certain size and it turns out to be either much bigger or much smaller than you imagined. In the case of this sponge, it's much bigger. I actually did get this from Jackson's, <laughs> even though it's a decorating sponge. I thought it was going to be kind of, I don't know, maybe about this kind of size. Just a little sponge that I could use while I'm working with the clay. And um, no, I have a gigantic decorating sponge. So what I'm going to do, I think, is cut it up into smaller chunks. So it'll be easier to work with. So continuing the pottery theme. I, oh, actually I have a brush in here as well. I don't just have sculpting tools. One thing I've realised is that I've forgotten a lot of the terminology for all of the different pieces of equipment you use when you're working with clay. Um, anyway, these handily have it written on them. <laughs> these are clay shapers. So these are like a little silicone um, tool. I don't think... Either these didn't exist when I was doing pottery evening classes or, um, I don't know, I just never heard of them. But they are really good for getting in there because I'm going to be making quite small items, I think. I won't say any more than that because I want to film the process and I want it to be a surprise as to what I'm working on. So you'll find out in due course. But yeah, these are really good if you want to smooth down small sections. Um, so I've got a chisel tip. So it's called a flat chisel and this one is a taper point. So I just thought it'd be good to have two of those. So I have a little bit more control over what I'm doing if I'm doing kind of small areas where I need to join two bits of clay together, for example. And here I have a really nice looking um, I was thinking this was a Jackson's brand, but maybe it isn't. It's called a quill brush. And I just saw it on Jackson's and I thought that looks really lovely. I love a brush with a good point. So that's what we have here. This wasn't too expensive. I can't remember exactly how much, but I think it was around five or six pounds, which seemed pretty good. Um, I might be wrong, maybe it was less, but it certainly wasn't more. It'd be interesting to have a go with that because it's a slightly different brush to the style I'm used to working with. So we also have another clay modelling tool here. I'm going to just open this up so you can see it better. This is good for taking some of the clay out if you want to create patterns, something like that. I remember working with this style of tool. I want to show you the metal ones now because they kind of fit in with this. So these ones came in a set. They actually came in a little pouch, which I wasn't expecting, but the pouch was a bit too small for them. So the really sharp one, look at this, looks lethal. The really sharp ends of this one, because it's like a double-ended tool, they were poking through <laughs> the ends of the pouch and it just wasn't very good. So I got rid of that and 
just decided I will pop them in like a pot or something when I'm not using them. So there's this one which is kind of like a double-ended knife. And you've got the slightly slanted one. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea how to describe these. Anyway, you have that end which isn't serrated. That end is. And you've got this funny little one which is like a miniature shovel. I think they're all double-ended actually. So that one looks like that. And then this one, serrated. <laughs> And then very strange, <laughs> very strange shape. I'm kind of thinking, what would you use these for? I mean, once I get started, I guess I'm going to find out. I don't remember having things that were this kind of shape when I did um, ceramics before. But then you've got this little one. You've just got that little kind of spoon end there and a little pointy end there. You see, it's all very technical. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So there are my lethal looking tools. So for something slightly less lethal, this is a beautiful object. <laughs> this was actually by an Etsy seller called Samuel Sparrow. Absolutely brilliant name. Sounds like some kind of Victorian person. <laughs> I don't know why, but it does to me. Love the name Samuel Sparrow. Um, he makes gorgeous pottery tools. His Etsy shop is Samuel Sparrow Studio and this is called the Extra Small Brass Rib Tool. He describes this as a solid brass potter's tool ideal for creating a smooth finish or shaping and curving clay. Um, I decided I needed one of these. I remember using something similar to this and I think they're really a useful tool to have. So before I show you what's in here, this is pottery related as well. I'm gonna show you the other things I have. Um, this was just something I reordered. This is the titanium white I use all the time for my canvas paintings. If you're looking for a good, relatively inexpensive white, the Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic is what I would recommend. This is the one I've been using for absolutely years. And um, yeah, so I was just running out and needed another one. Sorry about the lighting, by the way. It's a very changeable day out there and I'm noticing that it's going lighter and then darker. Sorry about that. I'm very excited about this one. I've been wanting to try this for ages. This is actually, tell you what, I'm gonna get rid of this box because then I can show you properly. So this is the Strathmore Toned Grey Soft Cover Sketchbook. I've been wanting to try this for ages. I really like working on grey paper. This actually feels really nice. It's super smooth, 112 pages, 80 pound, 118 GSM. So it's quite thin paper. I think it's mainly, um, does it say on here? Oh yes, it says in here, it says Tone Grey Sketch Paper. It's ideal for light and dark media, including graphite pencil, coloured pencil, charcoal, sketching stick, soft pastel and oil pastel. Okay, so this is going to be a good one for me to take when I go to Suffolk. I'm heading to Suffolk next week. I'm going to be there for a couple of weeks and I'm taking minimal art supplies with me. So I'm thinking of taking my coloured pencils. Obviously, this sketchbook will be great. To use with those. That may be all I take. I don't think I'm going to be taking paints. I am going to be taking my needle felting stuff. So I'm going to be doing some needle felting while I'm there and getting back into that as well. So I'm excited about that because I have some plans for different things I'd like to make. Um, so yeah, I think this one may be my travel sketchbook that may be coming with me. Um, so you'll be seeing some more of that soon. It'll be interesting actually because I don't usually use coloured pencils on their own. Um, someone mentioned this in my comments the other day about using just coloured pencils and it's not something I ever really do. I always use mixed media so I'll mix them in with pens or neo colour pastels or paint or whatever but I'm really curious to give it a go. So this was a bigger affiliate credit purchase. I'd actually saved up my affiliate credit so I had a bit more in there and decided to spend some of it. I'm a bit worried about pulling this out in case it, no I think it's all right. Okay let's get rid of the box. So this is a pottery banding wheel I think they're called. I'm going to pop it down 
on the desk is very heavy. So you place what you're working on on here and it just makes it easier to work. So you can turn um, as you're working and you can work on all sides of the piece. And as I know that I'm gonna be working on small sculptures, I guess you could say, I don't know whether sculptures is the right word. Um, I'm gonna to need to see them obviously from all sides. They're gonna be three dimensional. So this is gonna be, it's actually really smooth. It goes around really smoothly. This is gonna be a very useful piece of equipment, I think. I really like it, it's very solid. Uh, this actually cost, I think it was 43 pounds. So yeah, it's not cheap, but I figured it would make my life a lot easier. So the final pottery related item is this massive carton of acrylic polymer craft varnish. This is the gloss version. Um, I did wonder whether I wanted matte rather than gloss, but I think for the items I'll be making, I think gloss is gonna look better. And I'm going to be painting them. I don't know whether I said that actually. I'm gonna be painting them when they're dry and obviously you need to protect the paint. So. I'm going to be using this gloss varnish. I couldn't seem to find um, something that was exactly like this <laughs> because I wasn't sure what I needed to use at first. So I did some research and Jackson's only seemed to have this massive one. Um, I could probably make do with a tiny bottle, but you know, this will keep me going for quite some time. So I have that. And then the last item is something totally different. <laughs> this actually came from Amazon. Dominic found this on Amazon and he was like, this looks really interesting. Have you seen these? And indeed, I have not seen these. So it's actually called a sandpaper sharpener. And it's quite a nifty little device because it's like a great big clip and you clip it to the top of like your drawing board or your easel. I find the points of my colored pencils get blunt quite quickly. And then I have to keep sharpening them with like a traditional sharpener. And obviously it wears them down quite a lot. So with this, you would just be able to sharpen the point. If it's got a little bit blunt and you just want to get a better point again, this is perfect for that. And it even has this little um, bit here obviously if it's clipped on to the top of your drawing board or your easel it collects all of the little shavings in the bottom there so yeah i think that was like seven pounds something i thought it could save me over sharpening my pencils um, because obviously the colored pencils are quite expensive the type i use are quite expensive and i feel like i kind of wear them down very quickly so I'm gonna give this a go and we'll see how well this works. But yeah, I think it'll be good for also sharpening the Neo colors, getting a bit of a better point on those. Um, so yeah, as I say, Dominic saw it on Amazon and I bought it. <laughs> so that's the end of this art haul. I'm gonna move on to the swatching of the Tiny Clouds watercolors now. So yeah, let's get on with that. I can't wait to see what these colors look like. So here we're starting with the buttermilk, which is a really pale yellow, very creamy yellow. It doesn't show up very much on this paper. I'm using a handmade watercolour paper that I bought from an Etsy seller last year. And it's slightly off-white, so it doesn't show up that much, but I'll hold up all of the colours when they're dry at the end and you'll be able to see them closely. So the next colour was Shaw and this is absolutely beautiful. It's a granulating colour and I noticed that the purple pigment seems to show when you move the paint around and it dries really beautifully. You'll see that later. Thank you. 
Polaris is a gorgeous neutral stone colour with a gold shimmer and when the paint is dry you can really see the gold shimmer so clearly. Blood Moon is this beautiful burnt orange. I really love this colour, it's quite an unusual colour and I'm not sure I have anything that's quite like this in my paint collection. Aries is a gorgeous colour and when I look at it in reality, because while editing this video I actually have the colours in front of me, the dried swatches, and it's this gorgeous violet. Um, I'm struggling to know how to describe this one. Gorgeous violet but with a sort of pinkish undertone, I guess you could say. At least that's how it looks on this handmade paper, but it's really beautiful. Moonchild is a dusky, dark, muted purple, just the type of purple I love to use in my work. Sagittarius is a dark inky blue. It almost looks like a bluish toned Payne's Grey on this paper. Earthshine is a very interesting colour. It seems to granulate and again it's very dark and moody. You can see a little bit of a theme <laughs> with this palette and my colour preferences. Capricorn is such a beautiful blue. I love this colour. It seems to have a hint of, I would say, green to it. It's a slightly greenish blue and yeah, really, really beautiful. Eighth House is a really unusual colour. It's stunning because it has like this combination of indigo and gold. Um, you'll see this really clearly at the end, but there's a lot of shimmer in this one. So now we're on to the smaller free samples that I was given. And Seven Sisters is a super bright pink. Looking at it now it's dry, it looks almost like it has an element of neon pink in there. 
it's slightly granulating and um, yeah it's interesting it's dried up really interestingly because it looks more of a bubble gum kind of pink um, when it's wet enigma was a bit of an enigma <laughs> it was very pale i had to really try quite hard to reactivate it which was completely unlike the other paints but it's dried to the most beautiful pale lilac gray and i absolutely love it Pisces is that gorgeous blue that reminds me so much of the Holbein Ash Blue, so I'm a big fan of that one. I could see that this is something I would use in my work a lot. I would say the same of Enigma, actually. Seven Sisters, I don't think that's quite my kind of colour, but I might add a hint here and there in, like, for example, a grey landscape with lots of moody darker colours. I think it's quite nice sometimes to have like a bright pink or maybe a bright orange or something like that. The last three colours were the numbered dot cards, so they didn't have names. I'm assuming that perhaps these are tests she's making, I don't know. But number 13, is a lovely brown. It's kind of like, it has a slightly pink tone to it. At least that's how it looks to me. And it has a gorgeous gold shimmer, which I didn't actually realize when I was painting with it. I only realized this when it had dried. Number 17, beautiful green, lovely dark moody green, totally the kind of green I would buy. And the final one, number 18, reminds me a little bit of a paint I have from Beyond Indigo called Putty. And I really love that colour. So yeah, this is another one I would love to have in my palette. If you made it this far through the video, thank you all for watching. Leave a comment below telling me your favourite colour from the different colours I've swatched today. And thank you also to all of you who watch my videos and have managed to get this channel up to the 1 million views milestone. When YouTube told me about this the other day, I was so, so happy because <laughs> it seems like a really big milestone to reach. So thank you. Um, give this video a like if you enjoyed it because that really helps me out as well. And if you haven't subscribed already, maybe consider doing so. We have a really nice art community here now, so it'd be lovely if you wanted to be a part of that. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon.